Hey, what's going on, Brosif? Got us another no cooling call here. I always bring a filter with me, even though this one doesn't look bad. I'll leave it. Probably going to be another leaking first company coil. I've got two actually, so oh, let me get this back in. All right, got the filter back in. Yeah, another first company. If you guys see my other videos, you know they've been having a lot of leakers out here. They're all leaking, if you ask me. Let me find a light. We'll check the breaker first. Ah, the breaker's popped. Ah, you lucked out this time, first company. See how that breaker right there is in the middle? The breaker is tripped. So, these are rotary compressors that have hard starts from the factory. So let's go check that hard start. Yeah, this is one of those rotary compressors. I can't really get a shot of it down in there, but if you want to Google it, you can. It's different than the old Copeland scroll. Someone asked on a previous video, how do I like them? I don't like them. Not a fan. For one, they need a hard start. It comes from the factory with a hard start, and if this goes bad, it trips the breaker. And also, it seems like the superheat runs high on them. Like, I'll get the subcool where it needs to be, but the superheat would be around 25, you know, in between 20 and 30. So I don't like that. I don't like these, uh, rotary compressors plus like coming from the factory with a hard start dude that's already a red flag in my opinion my goodness so these things need to ohm out over 88 I mean if it's at 88 I still change it out but a good one is uh, not ohms but microfarads Seems to be around 110, 120 microfarads on these hard starts. And I'll test the cap as well. All right, these hard starts are real easy. Just pop the, the wires off the two terminals and put your, your meter leads on it. And you want your meter set to MFD for microfarads, or in my case, on my meter, it says cap. And you want to get over 100, and oh, this one's what, 1.1, so. It's a bad hard start after three years bro I mean I can't even get a solid half a decade out of anything around here I'm gonna test the capacitor as well I won't film it all because I know the last thing YouTube needs is another capacitor video so I'll get these things off of here and I'll be back all right, the capacitor tests good, but it's a 30 microfarad, 30 slash five. And these with the rotary compressors come, come with 45 microfarads. So that's what I'm gonna go back in there with. I don't know, if maybe some goofball panicked and just stuck whatever in there. But I'm gonna go with what I've noticed that's in all of these and that's a 45 microfarad capacitor. And I'm gonna change out this whole hard start. All right, I got 45 slash five capacitor in there. That's just what I've noticed that they all have, all these rotor compressors. All the rotary compressors have a 45 slash five cap. Gotta go check another AC after this. It was running, just not cooling. So I'm putting my money on another leaking first company coil. Who knows, maybe that low capacitor had the old hard start working overtime. Killed it. Who knows. All I know is I've never seen a 30 capacitor on any of these hard starts out here. Only 45ers. So to get these hard starts out, it's just a screw up here and a screw down there and that's it. Really easy fix. It's not like it's a pain in the butt or anything. It just seems to come at the worst time when you got a lot of other things going on. All right, big dog. Got the new hard start mounted, new capacitor. Now we'll just wire it up. Black wire to the common side of the contactor. 
Yeah, if any of you guys ever have these hard starts on your property and you get breaker issues on your AC, I got $100 right here on this hard start. That's what the issue is going to be. Go check another one after this. I got a hundred. It's going to be the the coil. The old first company coil. Well, guess I might as well check the charge on this one while I'm here. Huh? Might as well. All right, let me check my wiring here. Commons good. Fan brown. Yellow Herm new. Hard start. All right, I'll go turn it on. Check the charge. As long as the breaker stays on, that's all I care about. And real quick, I was just admiring the unit over here. We had a con, like a contractor, come out and replace the compressor on this thing. This was a while ago. Maybe nine months ago, so they put the filter dryer on, and um, I know the low voltage here is atrocious. They put the filter dryer on out here, but they didn't take the one out of here, out of the unit. It's still in there. I don't know if that's coming up on camera. That blue filter dryer there, that's the one that came with the unit. What do you guys say about that? A lot of HVAC guys watch. Is that good? Is that bad? I don't know. You've seen my past videos. I always pull the one out of the unit. Out of there. And replace it. So, not talking trash or anything. Just making an observation and wondering what you guys think down in the comment section. Alright, let's turn the old breaker back on. and Hope it stays on. Come on, big money. No whammy. Alright. Now we want it to stay on when we fire the unit up put it down to 75 there we go I hear refrigerant moving all right let's just go take a peep at the charge even though that's not why we're here we're here because the breaker popped but hey the on call guy will love me all right, it's running. No breaker poppage. That's good. That's the culprit right there, an old bad hard start. These doggone rotary compressors, not aging well. I'm gonna let this run for about 10 minutes or so and get this, make sure this sub cool here is about 10 to 12. It just turned on, so it's not ready yet, but we'll get it there. All right, big dog, we got the charge good here, but you see what I'm saying? With these rotary compressors, man, that super heat is always like around 25, in between 25 and 30. And then the sub cool will be, you know, good, around 12. It's on all of them, man, and it's got me nervous. It's got me bad TXV nervous. I mean, what are the odds that 100 TXVs are bad? It's, it's, it does this on every one of them, every one of them. The super heat will be, kind of high you know like at least below 20 with the sub cool at 12 I mean what should I run the sub cool up to around 20 I'm at a loss big dog but it cools you know what I mean it cools I don't have any complaints but it just makes me nervous makes me nervous hundreds of bad TXVs nightmare all right I'm gonna drive on they're blowing cold in there but that that high superheat I just don't understand it and it's with all the rotary compressors. No problems out of the Copeland's though. All right, on to the next call. All right, this resident's up in there smoking a big old blunt, so won't be able to record inside the apartment to do a leak check, but I'm sure it's low. If it's running and it ain't cooling, 99 times out of 100, with the first company coil, this joker's gonna be low out here. Uh-huh, look at that. Going way low, 70 PSI. There goes the sub cool, high superheat rising. So, I got another leaky coil. I would film it and do all I can, but dude's up in there roasting an old blunt. 
So I'll fill them up and I'll be back. That's all there is to this one. Just needs an old gas and go. Order another $2,000 coil. Alright, big dog. Got the sub cool. It's bouncing between 12 and 13. But as you can see, I cannot get that super heat below 20. This is a rotary compressor again. Totally different unit. I mean, that's a little better than the last unit that I did, which is around 28 ish super heat. But these rotary compressors, I cannot get that super heat below 20. What's up with that? What do you guys think in the comment section? All bad TXVs? Just like the whole property is just bad TXV? Don't do that to me, big dog. All right, guys. Uh, like I said, the guy's chief in a blunt, so I can't take my leak detector up there with the camera and sniff around, but pretty sure it's going to be a bad coil. All right, guys. Thank you for watching. We'll see you in the next one. Late. That's just the way it is.